Nobody likes to carry out unnecessary operations on their livestock. But where lambs can't be finished before grass supplies run out, castration of male lambs to control breeding remains a necessity. There are currently three main methods in use. Surgical removal of the testes, the rubber ring or elastrator, and the bloodless emasculator. As all good stockmen know, whichever method is used, there are some common basic principles. Castrate only those lambs that need to be done. Only castrate strong, healthy lambs. Those that are suckling well, have had plenty of colostrum, and plenty of time to bond with their mothers, usually at least 24 hours. Don't castrate lambs with undescended testicles or hernias, or those without protection against clostridial disease through vaccination of the U. Aim to castrate on a dry day. Make sure that both your equipment and the place in which you operate are clean to avoid infection. And finally, keep an eye on the lambs for several hours after castration to be sure of spotting any problems. Surgical removal of the testes without anaesthetic is still allowed in the first three months of life, but the procedure is painful for the lamb and both unpleasant and potentially hazardous for the shepherd. It also leaves a wound that's open to infection and fly strike. For all these reasons, the Farm Animal Welfare Council has recommended that it should be banned. The rubber ring or illustrator is at present the most popular method in the United Kingdom. But its use is only legally allowed in the first week of life. This rule causes obvious difficulties for many hill farmers who wouldn't usually gather their stock so frequently. Castration too early in life, however, can inhibit colostrum intake, leading to health problems such as watery mouth. If this is a problem, then castrating the lambs when they're a little older may be the solution. The illustrator operates by cutting off the blood supply to the testes and scrotum. However, the nerve remains intact for up to two hours. This can result in the lamb experiencing severe distress for up to 90 minutes. The most common signs of distress are panting, arching the back, rolling, kicking, foot stamping, shaking, head turning lying down and immediately standing up again and lying down with their legs extended. It's important to hold the lamb for castration in a way that's comfortable for both lamb and shepherd. Some shepherds operate on individual lambs single-handed, while others prefer to operate on batches of lambs with an assistant on hand to hold them. Once the lamb is held securely, expand the ring on the calipers of the application tool, then place it over the scrotum and hold it against the lamb's body. Locate the testes in the scrotum and gently ease them both down to the bottom of the scrotal sac. Lower the ring into place, just above the testes and below the teats, taking care not to catch the teats or any folds of skin. Finally, allow the calipers to close and extract them from the ring. It's important to allow a recovery time of about two hours before turning the lambs out. During this time, avoid driving or moving the lambs and their mothers to prevent them from being separated. Remember to keep castration rings clean as dirty rings are a source of infection they'll deteriorate over time. Don't store them in daylight as they'll lose their resilience and with it their ability to do the job. To summarize, the illustrator method is easy to apply. It's quick and effective, but it does cause severe distress to the lamb for a relatively long period of time. And it's only legal for lambs of up to seven days of age.
bloodless emasculation using a Bedizzo type emasculator can be carried out on lambs of up to three months of age. Trials at the Royal Dick Veterinary School have shown it to cause far less distress to lambs than the rubber ring method. However, a recent Scottish Agricultural College survey found that the procedure was often carried out with either inappropriate or poorly maintained equipment. This probably accounts for some of the failures which have resulted in its current lack of popularity. Bloodless emasculators work by crushing the spermatic cord inside the scrotal sac. They also disrupt the nerves, minimizing the length of time the lamb feels distress. The most common piece of equipment used for this method was, until recently, the Bedizzo emasculator. However, farmers often found the lamb version difficult to use, owing to a lack of room between the jaws. Following a study of this castration method funded by the Meat and Livestock Commission, researchers at SAC have developed an improved bloodless emasculator. This is now known as the Ritchie Nipper. Users find it easier to position and as a result the procedure is around 25% quicker. It minimizes damage to the scrotum and can also be used single-handed. In order to ensure that castration has been effected successfully, shepherds have usually applied the bloodless emasculator to each cord twice. However, in SAC's trials, a single application to each cord correctly applied has been nearly as effective with a very low failure rate. It's still important though to minimize the area of the scrotum that is crushed by the jaws. The indentations made should never overlap or join up, as this may cut off the blood supply to the whole scrotum. A timer has been added to alleviate the problem of the castrator being applied for too short a time. This is activated as soon as the jaws are fully closed and bleeps after 10 seconds until the handles are opened. The timer can be clipped to clothing or to the handling apparatus to allow other tasks to be carried out whilst waiting for the bleep. Trials with a prototype powered version have shown a 5 second application time to be just as effective as 10 seconds without causing any more distress to the lamb. To use the Ritchie nipper, locate the nearest cord in the scrotal sac and slide it to the side of the scrotum. Once the cord is located in the jaws, close the handles together until they lock. Leave them for the set time. And then release. Once one cord is emasculated, slide the jaws across to the other side and repeat the operation on the other cord. Take care not to catch a teat, as this will result in a larger wound than necessary. You may repeat the operation on each cord if you wish, in order to be absolutely sure. Whatever the breed, it's important to go through the lambs about four to six weeks later to identify any failures, easily recognized by simply feeling the scrotal sac. The testes should have withered and significantly reduced in size to less than 25 millimeters, roughly the length of the end of your thumb. If this isn't the case, then the operation may be repeated up to 12 weeks of age. Well, this new piece of uh, equipment is uh, long overdue. The advantages, as far as I see it, is that it's been specifically designed for lambs. It's easy to use, single-handedly if necessary, um, it's uh, a piece of equipment which can be used uh, particularly by hill and upland farmers who very often would prefer to castrate their lambs when they're a little older. And in this case it uh, carries very few risks, it does a clean and neat job uh, and it is probably the least painful of any of the techniques that is uh, available for lambs at this age. We used to use rubber rings, we weren't particularly happy with this. Although they were fairly easy to apply, there was an awful lot of writhing about and lambs that were recumbent and stationary and flapping about for periods of up to five minutes. I wasn't comfortable with this and I'm quite sure they weren't. Three or four years ago we bought two Ritchie nippers and we found them to be fast, efficient and humane. And I, and, I, and I stress the word humane, there is virtually no apparent distress to the lambs and I am content that 
we do our difficult job in the most uh, stress-free way possible. In order to check whether the nipper is applying the correct pressure, a standard nylon strip with the standard indentation is supplied with each emasculator. If the emasculator is applying too much pressure, it will cut the strip. Too little and the indentation will be far less marked. Always check the emasculator before each season's use. After the job is finished, cleaning and correct storage are both important. Bloodless emasculators should not be stored closed or in damp conditions, as this may either result in failures or injure the lambs when next used. To summarize, bloodless emasculation is best carried out at four to six weeks of age. Check that your equipment is clean and applying the correct pressure. Locate each spermatic cord separately and make sure it's between the jaws. Apply for at least five seconds to each cord and check the lambs four to six weeks after castration. Most sheep jobs, and particularly castration, are made much easier by the use of suitable handling equipment. The Dinkum Docker is one such device. It's relatively inexpensive, easily transported, and simply hooks over a gate or fence. Three lambs are held at once. When one's released, the next lamb slides down on shaped rollers towards the operator. SAC have simplified the guide rails on this Dinkum Docker to improve the flow of horned lambs. By improving cord location and emasculator operation, reducing damage to the scrotum to a minimum, and ensuring that the emasculator is applied for the correct time and at the correct pressure, the Ritchie Nipper should be a significantly more effective method of castration than previous designs. These advances in emasculated design, together with improved handling techniques and operator training, will also make this technique less stressful for lambs and more acceptable to farmers and the wider community.